わらし I'm probably gonna do really badly at this. I love bullet hell games. It's weird to me just how many of them uh, involve you playing as some kind of anime girl that can shoot so many lasers. Alright, let's see. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, A to shoot. Settings, da da da. Do not attempt to play on a standard television or computer monitor on its side. Should be played with a vertical screen only using a video monitor designed for that. It's vertical shooter. Um, what is the default? Put it like this. Okay, it's a vertical shooter that's been turned on its side. Fair enough. I like schmops. Wish I was better at them. Excelica or Cruelty. That looks way more useful. Okay, move your camera character around. Press oh god, I remember Trigger Heart Excelica. It has the anchor system that I absolutely cannot figure out. Like this visually in the heat of it just confuses me. And then you let go and throw it at things. So Anchor lets you lock on uh, for bosses. More difficult, but they allow you to use the Anchor in a variety of ways. Alright, so let's play Trigger High Exilica. I'm sure I'm not going to regret this. Right, so that's what this is. You can't change it here. That's what vertical meant. If we put it in vertical, it would be it would actually be horizontal. But it would be horizontal with the assumption that you're playing on a vertical screen. Alright, I get it. So I like bullet hells. Um somewhat into schmops. But bullet hells are my preferred brand. Probably because of like the visual interest of them. Come on. Ah, oh, we didn't get another one. I'm an anime robot girl. Yeah! Kill it! Yeah, the, an the anchor system, cool idea. I would need a lot more practice to actually be able to use it well. It's like the polarity system in Ikaruga. Love Ikaruga. And I can do Ikaruga if I'm not using the polarity system. If I am, it just confuses me. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go, we made it through. Damn. So bullet hells visually are meant to confuse you. Uh, dazzle you. Um, damn it, I wasn't paying attention to those red attacks. Uh, dazzle you and leave you somewhat frazzled, I guess. With everything that's going on. The easiest way to distinguish a bit, uh, bullet hell, though, the easiest way to deal with it is to see the patterns. It's a pattern game. And that's all you want to be looking for, the gap in the pattern. And that will get you through. Probably not. Here we go. 
like that. It's just look for the patterns, the gaps in the shots. And if you learn to distinguish it as a pattern system, then you shouldn't really have too much problem dealing with it. Although that's all theoretical, you end up at the point when what about when we start playing on the higher difficulties and get to the to the later bosses? What's actually going on there? Something's happening. I can't quite figure it out with my character. Oh, okay. I've, it's sending out drones, and I've just missed them completely. I didn't even notice them. That's a good way to ruin to ruin my entire strategy for this. So this is a, a port of an arcade game. It's very clearly designed that way. And I don't have a problem with that. Arcade games can be a lot of fun. I it, I think this game has something that I wish more arcade ports had, which is the ability to just turn uh, a limited live system off. Okay, I can deal with something here. Damn it, they're on the ground. Crazy. Yeah, stuff like uh, home ports of arcade games, I hate when they don't give you an unlimited uh, continue system. Because you're playing it at home, like what's the point of stopping you from doing that? And it's something Ikaruga does, Ikaruga will give you the option of playing with unlimited lives. And as a compromise, what it does is it just turns off the... Damn it. It turns off the score. Damn it. You can't get a high score that way. And it's like, that's fine. I don't care about the score. I just want to play through the game. And I like that. It's a good idea. Like, meanwhile, you consider something like Final Fight. I did not see that coming. You consider something like Final Fight on Super Nintendo, which is a busted port to begin with. I am not doing well at this. And it's a case of get through the entire game with a limited number of lives. And a limited number of continues. And it's like, is that how it was in the arcade? No, you theoretically could have an unlimited number of continues in the arcade. Especially since it was a game designed to steal your money anyway, because that's what arcade games in the 90s were. I'm sorry, I mean in 1989, because it's Street Fighter 89. This is... I am not doing well here. No, oh, let me get the power-ups. There we go. I like bullet hell shooters. Doesn't mean I'm particularly good at them. How many stages does this game have? Are we going to do this entire game? I wasn't planning on it, but now that I think about it... Yeah, this is a, an Xbox 360 game that we're playing back. It's compatible on Xbox One. And the Xbox One, uh, the Xbox 360 got a bunch, damn it, uh, a bunch of uh, bullet hell shooters. PS3 really didn't, which is kind of a shame, because I had the PS3 uh, at the time. Uh, but a lot of them, strangely enough, are backwards compatible on Xbox One, which is a shame. It's like Meet the Robinsons, the tying game with that Disney movie that very few people actually remember. That's backwards compatible. But Don't Unpatch Your Resurrection? Nope. Not allowed that. Okay, that works out pretty well. So the anchor system is very clearly a large part of this. And 
uh, to really succeed, you're gonna have to learn it. What else we got? Akai Katana, uh, Death Smiles, it was a bunch of really good schmucks on Xbox 360. It got its own port of Ikaruga, which for some reason didn't go to PlayStation. Damn. You see, if you notice how the rotation is actually destroying and um, blocking a bunch of the bullets. It does make me consider whether or not there are just patterns that you can't make it through. And the intention is, grab yourself a shield. Let's see how this one goes. We should do another bullet hell at some point. Uh, one that doesn't have a gimmick that I just cannot work my head around. So that that way I don't have an excuse for when I keep dying. Almost done. There we go. Next stage. I don't even know what's going on. Although I suppose now that we've done this, at some point we should probably do Gradius and Darius and our type. This is an arcade game. Maybe we could actually change this from a weekend one off to a. Uh, Sunday at the Arcade, which I've been thinking about doing. Who knows, maybe this will be our inaugural Sunday at the Arcade. Damn it, why is getting the one behind me? Ah, damn it, I got cornered. Come here. Oh dear. I am not good at this. Hmm. Wait, 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 okay. The movement is a lot slower than I'd expect from a traditional bullet hell. It looked like I was doing so well there as well. Like, no, I can actually do this genre. Okay, now what? I like the detail on the, uh, the jet thrusters on the character model there. Specifically pointing in the direction you're actually moving. So, Excelica has the larger firing range. And it makes me consider what does Cruel Heart get to compensate? Yeah, the anchor system is very much essential. Just about aiming it. Come on! There it is! Nice. See, there's your problem. I was definitely relying far too much on the bullets. As opposed to the anchor. Which is very clearly super important. I like that this no limit continues. Well, I've mentioned it before, but like, I don't think any game, sold as a home, home game, should have a limit continues.
That's crazy. I mess up there and you're basically done. You ain't getting back. It's like the Castlevania Marathon uh, when it was going on. We. I, I mentioned about. Castlevania Bloodlines, which is a really solid Castlevania game that I have one real problem with, and that's that it's the only classic Castlevania that doesn't have limited continues. And it's like, you know, for as ridiculously hard and honestly just unfair how unfair Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse can be, it has a limited continues, you just keep going. But, you know, it was endemic of Konami's design in the 90s. Yeah. Okay, something's going on. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. It's a good shield system, but then they start throwing more at you and the shields only have a limited capacity. I needed that to get a lot closer to me before it exploded. I feel like they're actually pretty generous with the, um... The throw. That's gonna take a while. Ah. Like, I feel like... Throw will actually, when you throw a, a ship forward, it has a really wide hitbox, a lot wider than it seems. But the bullet hell genre is a genre with deceptive hitboxes anyway. Like, it's basically a design point that your character will be, the hitbox for your character will be smaller than the actual character. Nice, I managed to get it. Did you get that one? Yeah. Nice, it only missed the one at the end. And we can use it as... Oh, what would be the word? Like, we just spin it around like that and whack enemies with it. It's pretty fun. This is a game that if I had the attention span these days, I'd be really into getting good, getting good at. Like, spending a bunch more time with it to properly learn how to play it. It's one of those cases, like, if I was going to have a bullet hell shooter as a kid, it would have been Ikaruga because it was on GameCube. But I would have probably played the hell out of Ikaruga. Alright, what's going on? Boss. Oh, it's another anime robot girl. The true battle. Ah, whoa, boy. I might need to lock on to her. Well, I want to say partners like that, which we just had to deal with, uh, looks a lot more dangerous than it is. Just find the hole, find the gap in it. There it comes again. So when we're dealing with uh, standard bullet hell stuff, no, I can deal with this. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Thank you. No! Cruel tear! What a gripping story this game about shooting anime robot girls is. 
Come on, give me some of that. Give me some of this junk. Well, I need more of the junk. Come on. No, we're not going to leave Tear Heart, Cruel Heart that way. So the anchor system at this point is a little bit awkward. Like trying to grab some of this stuff which seems essential for this fight. And we end up with a problem of sometimes we're just not grabbing anything and locking onto the enemy instead. Go. Alright, we did it. Is that the end of the game? Come on, Crawl Tear. Let's get out of here. I assume it's Crawl I assume it's the other character. Is she anchoring us? No! Sometimes these games are really weird. That was the entire game. I wasn't keeping track of how many times I died, but that was that was like twenty minutes. Hmm. It's good stuff. Bullet Hells, a genre I am fond of. The, you know, it's one of those things I wish I could be better at. But it's a case of practice, and with this specifically, going through this, it's very clearly designed with the anchor system intended uh, to be used a lot more than I was using it. Like, there's just segments where there is no pattern to get through. You have to uh, grab something and use it as a shield, and use it as a throwing weapon to just destroy as many enemies as you can quickly. But that was Trigger Heart Excella. That was pretty fun. Excelica. There's a whole story to this thing, jeez. Did you get this in the arcade version? Excelica, Cruelty... Faint here, mysterious enemy. Uh, but that was that was Trigger Heart Excelica. It was pretty fun. Backwards compatible on Xbox One. It's an arcade game. Pick it up for a price that seems reasonable to you and learn the anchor system. <laughs>